What triggers your submechanophobia? Is it swimming next to an actual animatronic, or just watching a submerged animatronic move? Is it the size and closeness, or watching an abandoned animatronic deteriorate? This fear is probably different for each and every one of us, but whatever the reason, most of us here today have a love-hate relationship with this phobia. So, we bring you Submechanophobia Animatronics. This video is sponsored by Ye Old Prop Shop. Stay until the end for an awesome giveaway. Number 6. Eftling Monstro We have been pretty vocal lately about our love for the Eftling recently here on Fast Pass Facts, and one of the things that we love most about that park is that they take a lot of risks in their attractions, and don't mind being more on the scary side of things. In our Eftling video, which you should definitely go check out, we talked about how it went from a simple nature park into the fantastic theme park it is today. And the thing that began this whole evolution was the famous fairy tale forest. The fairy tale forest was a huge success. Nowadays, you can find 30 different fairy tale depictions from famous fairy tale writers, such as the Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen, as well as more unknown stories and even original fairy tales created by the Efteling. One of these fairy tales is Pinocchio. The Pinocchio fairy tale opened on March 24th, 2016, and it has three different scenes. The first scene is Geppetto's workshop. Through the windows, you can see the interior of the workshop, where dozens of mice, squirrels, and birds play on and with Geppetto's toys and other carvings. In the next scene near the workshop, we find some barrels where the fox and the cat, or Honest John and Gideon, are hiding, waiting for their next victim. And then there's the harbor, and in the harbor you will find nightmare fuel. Inside a pond, you can find the huge orange-red fish that swallowed Geppetto and Pinocchio. The animal appears to be a cross between a warty whale and a deep-sea angler, with luminous tentacles and a mouthful of dangerous teeth. Around the beast, there is a cloud of fishy air, and from time to time, the beast spouts an intense burst of water from its blowhole. This huge animal is half-submerged, and it even has an interactive feature. There is a rod with a feather that visitors can use to tickle the monster awake. Whenever someone turns the reel of the rod, the animal wakes up, opening its eyes and mouth. At the back of its throat, we see Pinocchio together with his father Geppetto. Geppetto is standing behind a table with a lit candle, and Pinocchio looks startled, his arms raised in the air. The fish's mouth closes and opens again a little later. This time, Pinocchio is much more visible in the front of the mouth. Geppetto is still behind the table. Pinocchio tries to get out of the fish and calls for help. The water bubbles around this huge fish while we can hear it growling, so you can definitely imagine how amazing and creepy this is at the same time. Not only is this beast pretty big, but we can also get very close to it, and the whole Pinocchio asking for help while inside the fish thing doesn't help it to be less terrifying. Still, this is not very far up on the list, because the fish's design is not that creepy while well compared to the other ones we'll be talking about, and also, the animatronic is in perfect condition. Number 5. Lucy Loch Ness The year was 2005, and more than 600 tourists were shocked to be watching for the first time the Loch Ness Monster, emerging from the loch's surface. Could it be that they were experiencing the first real evidence of this mythical monster's existence? Sadly for them, no. So what was it? Well, as part of a television stunt and the Loch Ness Monster The Ultimate Experiment documentary, Channel 5 spent over £100,000 to create a 440 pound plesiosaur animatronic named Lucy. This animatronic was designed so it could swim in the dark waters of the Loch Ness and surprise tourists in order to get their reactions on tape. Lucy was made by animatronic experts from the Crawley Creatures Special Effects Company, whose owner, Jez Harris, helped create the model of Jabba the Hutt in the Star Wars film Return of the Jedi. Lucy was made from fiberglass and polyurethane rubber. She took 14 weeks to build and had to be aided in the water by divers, a job none of us would want to have. Just imagine having to swim in the dark waters of the lake, helping this huge and heavy animatronic move. This terrifying but very impressive animatronic was fitted with air mechanisms to allow different movements of her head, neck, and jaw. Lucy appeared in the water near a campsite, at the ruins of picturesque Urquhart Castle, and in front of the Royal Scott cruise ship, which runs tours of the loch. 
The documentary was recorded for two weeks, and many of the tourists who were able to experience it really believed that what they had seen was the real Loch Ness Monster, and they continued doing so until a week before the documentary came out, when Channel 5 broke the silence and revealed the truth about the animatronic. The only footage that we could find of this animatronic was in the Crawly Creatures demo reel, because the documentary is impossible to find. So if anyone happens to know where we can watch it, let us know in the comments. The animatronic can currently be found in perfect condition at the Oxford University Museum of Natural History. This animatronic fits perfectly on the list because it is terrifying, it is enormous, and it moved underwater. And the creepiest thing is that it could be found in a natural environment. However, we placed it in number 5, because it was only used for a short time. Not only that, but it was also never abandoned or even deteriorated, and it is no longer submerged. Seeing it in the museum is undoubtedly very imposing, but it doesn't give us the submechanophobia chills that it caused when seeing it submerged in the dark waters. Number 4. Billabong Bunyip The city of Coffs Harbour, Australia is known all around the world for having the largest banana in Australia. This banana was built in 1964 as an attraction around a banana plantation. Over time, the park began evolving and adding new attractions like water slides, an ice skating rink, and more. One of the most beloved attractions was the Baldwin Express monorail. This attraction took guests through several scenes where they were taught about the history of agriculture, kind of what we see at Epcot in the land. In one of the scenes of the attraction, the monorail passed by a billabong, and without notice, a terrifying creature could be seen swimming by. This creature emerged and stuck its head out of the water. It was a bunyip. For those of you who are not familiar with the term, a bunyip is a large mythical creature from Australian mythology, said to lurk in swamps, billabongs, creeks, riverbeds, and waterholes. The bunyip had at least three different mechanisms that gave the illusion that this monster was pretty big. Sadly, the attraction closed in 2005, mostly because the operating costs were very high, and the park couldn't afford to keep it in the best condition. So what happened to the bunyip? Well, no one knows for sure. But the most heard rumor is that it was abandoned and eventually sank into the billabong, which makes it even more terrifying. People have been asking about it for a while, but the answers have been very ambiguous, which is what makes us think that it was probably abandoned. In 2015, on the official Big Banana Park Facebook page, a survey appeared in which they asked if people wanted to see the bunyip come back. So that gives people all over the hope that it may be restored and returned to the park one day. This terrifying creature is number 4 on our list, since it was nightmare fuel for many people. Seeing such a creepy animatronic swimming and then emerging from the dark waters was such a scary experience, and thinking about it being abandoned now and lying at the bottom of the billabong makes it even worse. Number 3. The Crocodile, Lake Placid Last time we talked about this animatronic, we made the mistake of saying that Lake Placid is not a good movie. We heard you loud and clear, and we won't be mentioning that again. What we will be mentioning again, of course, is the amazing and terrifying animatronic that was created for this movie. This animatronic was also created by the super famous and talented team at Stan Winston Studios, solely for the purpose of using it for this movie. The biggest challenge with this animatronic is what brings all of you here today. The animatronic had to be submerged in the water all the time. But being as talented as the team in the studio is, they made it work and created a full-sized animatronic puppet, complete with moving head and tail and snapping jaws that would function underwater. The stuff of nightmares. To give you an idea of how big and terrifying this thing was, the largest crocodile in captivity back in 2013 measured a little more than 20 feet. The Lake Placid Crocodile was over twice as long as that. To create it, the team first made a small scale model that would serve as a guideline for the full size build. The crocodile was mechanized through hydraulics, which, as had been learned on previous projects, worked fairly well in a water environment, as long as they were protected in waterproof housings and surrounded by a water resistant skin. Now, before finishing the animatronic and doing a whole paint job, the crew took it to Castaic Lake in Los Angeles National Forest to test it. Imagine running into that thing when they were testing it. The team dropped it in the lake to confirm that the animatronic worked well underwater and swam as they needed it. And of course, it moved perfectly, and even propelled itself. As soon as they knew this nightmare fuel worked, they took it back to the studio, 
finished adding lots of paint details and texture so the animatronic would look as real as humanly possible. They fixed some small problems and the crocodile was ready to go. While they were filming, the crew attached the crocodile to a boat using a wire so it could gain greater speed and the animatronic was a success. It must have been terrifying for the actors to be swimming in the lake, being chased and attacked by this thing. A huge animatronic crocodile swimming in a real lake attacking us? <laughs> no thank you. This is ranked in number 3 because while this crocodile is the stuff of nightmares, it was only used for these movies and we will never get to experience the fear firsthand. It was also never abandoned or deteriorated. But if you see it from certain angles, you could see some exposed mechanisms, which is an added creepy factor. We asked the experts from Stan Winston Studios what happened to the animatronic after they were done with it, and they said that sadly, it was eventually dismantled as it was just too large to store and no longer operational. But at least we can still see it in action. Number 2. Bruce Jaws it was so hard not to place Bruce as number one, since he was the animatronic that completely changed the film and the special effects industry. Not only that, but it terrified a whole generation to such a degree that they could not even go into a pool without thinking about him. Spielberg was able to create a classic that people would never forget, but the film almost cost him his career. In the fall of 1973, director Joe Alves designed the shark for Jaws. Three full-size, pneumatically-powered units were constructed at the cost of $150,000 each. They were collectively named Bruce, after Steven Spielberg's lawyer. They each measured about 25 feet long and weighed hundreds of pounds. One shark, known as a sea sled, was a full-bodied prop with its stomach carved out. The other two, known as platform sharks, were each one-sided. One platform shark moved from camera left to right, with the side facing away from the camera completely exposed. The other moved in the opposite direction. Once completed, the three sharks were trucked to Martha's Vineyard. The sharks were built by a legendary team overseen by mechanical effects supervisor Robert A. Maddy, also known for creating other terrifying creatures, like the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea Squid. But despite the huge expertise of this team, the shark animatronics were a headache for the film's production. There are other reports that the sharks would sometimes slip off of the platform and get tangled in a bed of seaweed. At other times, the pneumatic hoses that controlled the shark's movement took on salt water. The foam used as the skin on the sharks became bloated and parts even corroded. Not only that, but the shark also sank once it was placed in the sea and divers had to go and fish it out. That must have been such an awful experience. But as incredible as this may seem, this helped the movie to be a greater success, since many of the scenes had to be changed so that they wouldn't have to use the shark so much, and this created greater suspense for the final scenes. Even Spielberg thinks that the movie would have made half the money had the shark worked. As we all know, the film went on to be a huge success, but at the time when the film was finished and before it came out, Spielberg thought that his career was over. The studio was reluctant to make the movie because they had no confidence in it. So keeping sharks in good condition was not a priority, and they just dumped the sharks in the back lot, and they rotted away. Thankfully, the shark's molds were saved, and a fourth shark was created. This shark could be seen by guests visiting Universal Studios Hollywood from 1976 to 1990, until it was, again, abandoned in a junkyard. Fortunately, it was then saved and restored by the legendary Greg Nicotero, who later donated it to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Museum. Bruce is so far up on this list because it is basically the father of submechanophobia causing animatronics. And seeing all the different Bruce animatronics with their exposed mechanisms in the ocean is a nightmare. Not only that, but the fact that they were abandoned makes it a very compelling reason for being number two. Number one. Bert Bertha and Baby Bunyip. If you want to talk about submechanophobia, it's impossible to do it without mentioning the Murray Bridge Bunyip. This animatronic has become an icon among this vast community, but what are the origins of this character and why is it so terrifying? Well, its name is Bert, and it was created by Dennis Newell. The animatronic debuted in 1972 at Murray Bridge, Australia, and just like the Big Banana Park one, it is based on the Bunyip legends. When he first debuted, guests could pay 20 cents to make the Bunyip emerge from his cave. 
when it emerged. It made a sound so loud that it could be heard a whole kilometer away. The first incarnation of Bert was terrifying, and as time went by, it only got worse due to the fact that it started wearing down because it was submerged. If this whole scene was not scary enough, in 1982, Bert was turned into Bertha and given a little baby bunyip. That same year, someone vandalized the bunyip sound box so it would never stop roaring. They sadly also vandalized Bertha and her baby, and in 2000, they were removed. A more friendly and less noisy version of the bunyip was brought back, but sadly, its baby was nowhere to be found. The bunyip continues terrifying whoever dares visit it, but nothing compares to what guests could find back in October 2017. During this time, there was an oil leak in the bunyip's cage, which turned this animatronic into its most terrifying version. It emerged from the water, completely dark and covered in oil. Thanks to this leak, most of the animatronic's mechanisms were damaged and the smell was terrible. In 2019, the bunyip was completely renovated, and the repairs were estimated to cost around 100,000 Australian dollars. With its return, the bunyip show is now completely free, and the Murray Bridge bunyip can be found lurking in its cave today on the banks of the Murray River at Sturt Reserve, Murray Bridge. Bert is definitely number one on our list because he is not only terrifying in each and every one of its incarnations, but he is also the symbol of submechanophobia everywhere. All of these animatronics are so interesting and creepy at the same time, but there are so many more out there. If you want to keep this submechanophobia high going, go check out Theme Park Crazy's Underwater Animatronics video, where he talks about many other terrifying animatronics. He has an excellent channel, and that video is fantastic. We'll leave a link in the description. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the giveaway. Hey guys, so we're partnered again with GL Prop Shop to bring you this awesome giveaway. They have released these new light up LED coasters that light up whenever you place your drink on them. And to get your very own coaster, all you have to do is follow us on Instagram at FastPassFacts. And then like and comment on this post which animatronic was the scariest to you. And that's it! We'll be announcing the winner next week. You should also definitely check out all the awesome things that Yo Prop Shop has to offer. Check the link in the description. We also want to thank all of you for sending your fan art. We loved every piece, so let's go check it out. See you next week. Bye!